A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The apostles and the brothers in Judea heard that the pagans too had accepted the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, the Jews criticized him and said, so you have been visiting the uncircumcised and eating with them, have you? Peter in reply gave them the details point by point. One day when I was in the town of Jaffa, he began, I fell into a trance as I was praying and had a vision of something like a big sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners. This sheet reached the ground quite close to me. I watched it intently and saw all sorts of animals and wild beasts, everything possible that could walk, crawl or fly. Then I heard a voice that said to me, Now, Peter, kill and eat. But I answered, Certainly not, Lord. Nothing profane or unclean has ever crossed my lips. And a second time the voice spoke from heaven. What God has made clean, you have no right to call profane. This was repeated three times before the whole of it was drawn up to heaven again. Just at that moment, three men stopped outside the house where we were staying. They had been sent from Caesarea to fetch me, and the Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going back with them. The six brothers here came with me as well, and we entered the man's house. He told us he had seen an angel standing in his house who said, Stand, send to Jaffa and fetch Simon, known as Peter. He has a message for you that will save you and your entire household. I had scarcely begun to speak when the Holy Spirit came down on them in the same way as it came on us at the beginning. And I remembered that the Lord had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I realized then that God was giving them the identical thing he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And who was I to stand in God's way? This account satisfied them, and they gave glory to God. God, they said, can evidently grant even the pagans the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm is, My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. When can I enter and see the face of God? My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. O oh, send forth your light and your truth. Let these be my guide. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. And I will come to the altar of God, the God of my joy. My Redeemer, I will thank you on the harp. My God, O oh God. My soul is thirsting for God, the God of my life. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and my own know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I tell you most solemnly, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold through the gate but gets in some other way is a thief and a brigand. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the flock. The gatekeeper lets him in. The sheep hear his voice. One by one, he calls his own sheep and leads them out. When he has brought out his flock, he goes ahead of them 
and the sheep follow because they know his voice. They never follow a stranger, but run away from him. They do not recognize the voice of strangers. Jesus told them this parable, but they failed to understand what he meant by telling it to them. So Jesus spoke to them again. I tell you most solemnly, I am the gate of the sheepfold. All others who have come are thieves and brigands, but the sheep took no notice of them. I am the gate. Anyone who enters through me will be safe. He will go freely in and out and be sure of finding pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it to the full. The Gospel of the Lord. To continue the theme we've been looking at recently, I'll draw your attention to John's Gospel once again, because now we're in a different chapter, in chapter 10. Yesterday we had the, the, the Gospel of the Good Shepherd, and, and, and now our Gospels will continue to explore uh, that theme somewhat. Uh, and all of this is a pedagogy, teaching us what resurrected life looks like, what, what kind of life Jesus is calling. So we refer back to that uh, uh, Nicodemus conversation that Jesus has about being born again. So it's a new life, it's a new birth we receive through baptism, but also through the Holy Spirit uh, and through our willingness to participate in this resurrected mystery of Jesus' life amongst us. And then we last week had the bread of life discourse, so a, a huge teaching on the, on the importance of Jesus as our spiritual food, and most especially we understand that uh, to relate to what we're given through the Holy Mass, the participation in the death and resurrection of Jesus made into food for us, a holy communion, which draws us into the mystery of the Trinitarian love that Jesus makes possible for us to participate in. So now, John's... Uh, Gospel continues and we're in chapter 10, so we're, we're, we're around the theme of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, but we're told by John that the people don't really get what he's saying, so he tries another approach and he starts talking about the gate of the sheepfold, so a different image. He says, I am the gate, perhaps not one of the most sort of dramatically beautiful statements of Jesus, uh, um, but still one of those I am sayings. We were saying about ego e me, the importance of that I am, that that, that claim to be uh, related to that, that source of existence that God is. And so another way of seeing that is Jesus is the gate. What's he the gate to? Well, a beautiful uh, verse that comes up, a little chapter and verse that would be nice to remember if we were that way inclined. John 10.10, 10, easy to remember. Uh, at the end of our gospel today, I came that you may have life and have it to the full. What a beautiful uh, summary of all of the gospel, life and life to the full. So Jesus is offering true life. So this is the gate. He is that gate into that true life. And why does he make so much uh, uh, he comments about thieves and brigands and other people who've come? They weren't the true gate, um, just as he said about bad shepherds. Well, the spiritual world, the spiritual life is a huge mystery for us. But it's kind of fascinating once you open up to it. Um, Anything goes, in a sense. You can, you, can, you, can, you can imagine, you can suppose, and people have throughout the ages. They've had all sorts of different ideas about the spiritual realm. We know we have different established religions in the world. Um, so those are different sort of graspings of, of what might be going on in the spiritual realm. And without criticizing them, um, we want to say that uh, for us, we want to understand that Jesus is revealing what we really need to know about the spiritual realm, what is safe to know. Um, and this, this particularly becomes pertinent when people are trying to find spiritual truths or spiritual, a spiritual dimension to their life, but they can be led astray, even as something as innocent as horoscopes. I know that horoscopes are sort of part of uh, contemporary culture in some way, and people perhaps pay them a little bit of attention. Um, it gets a bit more serious when people start looking at other ways of trying to access the spiritual realm, what we generally call magic or occult or, uh, um, uh, or things to do with uh, trying to, to find or medium spiritualism, that kind of thing, trying to get spiritual knowledge. Um, to get some sort of superior uh, vantage point, as it were, about who we are and about our future. Here, Jesus is warning against all of that. 
He's saying, that's not, that's not for you. That's not the spiritual direction I want you to go into. The only way that you're going to be safe in this mysterious, big spiritual realm is through me. So he's the good shepherd. He will lead his sheep into the safe spiritual realms. Um, and, and this will be true life that we receive through him. Uh, and so when he says elsewhere, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father but through me. So whether people know it or not, their eternal destiny in the end will always be through Jesus because of who he is, the word through whom all things were made, the eternal son of God and our savior and redeemer. And so he's encouraging us to, to persevere, to, to see that central place that he has. And with him, then we're safe in the spiritual realm. And, and we, we, we know that that now is mediated through the church. So it's through the church that we understand the spiritual realities, that God is a trinity of, 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 of a communion of love, that the Eucharist is truly the body and blood of Christ, that the Catholic Christian church is the greatest gift in order to be able to be open to, to lead us to salvation, the existence of heaven. All these basic fundamental uh, truths that we believe are safe. They're safe for us. Uh, uh, and, and so we have to believe in them. We have to make that step in trust. But we do it on the, on the witness of Jesus, the authority of Jesus, saying, you can trust me. You can trust me. I'll lead you safely. I am the good shepherd. I am the gate that opens up to true life. Perhaps just a little uh, um, addition to that, we could look at the, the, the first reading we had today from the Acts of the Apostles. is a bit like one of the first early councils of the church. It becomes a bit more important when Peter and Paul have their first real sort of interaction. Uh, we'll be hearing about that soon. But this is like a little premonition of what the church is going to have to do throughout the ages. So Jesus has ascended at this point. So we're going sort of forward in history. And, but he's ascended at this point, And now the, now the church is having to work out its way, guided by the Holy Spirit. Um, and Jesus promises the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. And the issue here is that Peter has been associating with, with pagans. So people outside of that, that, that fold of Israel. Uh, which Jesus himself did, so he gave the example, uh, but it's clearly become a problem because there's still, there's still this sort of tension of wanting to draw back what Jesus gave to be specifically for Israel. And Peter has been starting to make forays into the pagan world, and he has this vision which affirms that, that's, yes, that's correct, because the gospel is for all. It's the Catholic church that's being established. Catholic means universal. So it's for everyone now. It's not just for Israel. Israel was the seedbed, but now the fruit is to be universal. And, and so right there we can see the church having to work out what is the safe way? What would, what would Jesus do? Like those little bracelets that came out a few years ago. What would, what, what's Jesus telling us? How do we, and we don't have him here anymore to tell us, do this, do that. And that's, that's a really important principle, especially for the Catholic Christian tradition, because in, in the grace of that development, what we call the development of doctrine and the development of tradition, all, a lot of those spiritual truths that are now part of our faith, the Eucharist, uh, the Trinity, uh, our understanding of the communion of saints, particularly the intercessory role of Our Lady is preeminent in that, um, other doctrines about purgatory, for instance, they, 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 they've become part of the church's awareness throughout the centuries. Um, and yet they are, and they, they weren't specifically spelled out by Jesus, but they were, they were, they were there, but the church has had to, to find them guided by the Holy Spirit. And this has become a bit of a bone of contention with others who said, well, you've, the church has invented that, so you're not the true church. You've invented these doctrines. But it's not a question of inventing, it's a question of being guided by the Spirit over the centuries, because Jesus didn't tell us everything. He just gave us the essential core of the faith, and then he left it in the hands of the apostles and the early believers to work this out, but with trust that they were being guided safely uh, by the Good Shepherd uh, to, to, to understand this great spiritual mystery revealed through Christianity uh, and find a sure path to life, uh, which is to say life in this world, but also eternal life uh, in the next. So a lot going on. So the, the teaching continues uh, and we will continue to follow John's gospel uh, to be guided in this way at this time. So let's pray to be able to, to, to try and perceive uh, all the great gifts being offered to us uh, through these words and, and find in our hearts uh, that response, that great desire to have life and life to the full and share that life with others who God puts in our path.